do. I think that was the easy part. It was a little bit precarious. This is my band of Pamela from Afri Orchids. Thank you for joining me on the big move into the five-star deluxe accommodations of my vendacious Afri Orchids, orchids that are currently still on mount. Moving into Orchid Top. Banda Pamela was bare root and has been tidied over since her arrival with filling the Greek yogurt tub, often with cow mag and seaweed, emptying the yogurt tub, letting her dry out. This is my Banda Pamela 2.0. The other one did not make it because I had her in ceramis and it could be that it was far too wet of an environment for her. So this time I am choosing lava rock only. It was a little bit of a delicate operation because I got root tips all the way at the bottom. There might have been some damage incurred in the meantime despite using the submerged method, including possibly, possibly this root tip right here. I'm not entirely sure whether I bashed that when I was putting her into the orchid top, but I am able to monitor what is going on around with the other roots. And then we'll just have to wait and see if there's one root tip that will continue to grow, which is under this lava rock, where I try to create a little structure around the root tip so I don't touch the root tip. And I basically built lava rock over that root tip. I don't know if that worked, but I am sure that she's going to be much better off in this setup than she was last time in self-watering with Ceramis. That is my hope anyway. So yes, it was a little bit precarious, but I believe this was the easy part. What is coming up next? Well, if you wanna stick around and join me for that, thank you very much. The potting up method for all the others is gonna be exactly the same. Just different size lava rocks for the little mounted orchids that I have that have smaller roots. But it'll be orchid top, submerged, and then fill around it. Getting them off the mount is gonna be the tough part. If you want to stick around for that, I appreciate your company. It helps me to stay diligent as well. Other than that, you can also fast forward. To see the end result, I will leave timestamps in the description. But now, it's time to settle the hands and get the surgeon calm approach and get some orchids off mounts without doing too much damage. Here they are, okay. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to have too much trouble with my Setorcus Pretermisa. This one is not going to be too difficult either. My biggest concern is my Mysticidium Capensa and whether I'm going to actually risk taking her off the mount because the roots are fleshier than any of the other candidates. What I've done in the meantime is make sure that the light is coming from this direction, away from the mount so that the orchid starts to move towards the light and not grow flat up against the mount because clearly if I'm planning to put her in a pot, if I put her upright, she'll look like this. So I've been working on that and I'm getting new roots. I am going to risk it with the capense and see how far I go. But I'm going to start with my Sirtorkis here because she, she is sort of my, let's say, if everything goes well with her, it'll encourage me to move on with the other ones. Got lots and lots of root tips going. Some of these down here have died in the meantime. We'll take care of that. But yeah, let's start with this. I hope that the camera angle will stay in focus because I'm not going to be doing much looking at the screen. I don't know if at this point in time I'm going to fast forward either because if I see or come across videos like these, personally, I like to stick around and watch the process. A little bit slower, but watch the process. And then my heart rate goes up for whoever is attempting this as well. So let's see about the back. And if I am quiet, I do apologize. I sometimes cannot multitask when I'm focusing on getting roots off mounts while talking and being trying to be entertaining. So forgive me for that if I am quiet. So what I'm gonna attempt here right now is go under the cork, not to the edge of the root, but underneath the cork and wedge the root off in that manner and see if I can't release it that way. Poking into the cork and jiggling the knife a little bit hoping that the part that I'm holding on to is not going to snap on me. 
because that will send the orchid flying as I'm applying quite a bit of pressure here. Push comes to shove. If I need to salvage the root and leave some of the cork on, then that's what I'm going to do. Concentration 101. Okay, orchid top is like a semi hydroponic kind of growing, so they always recommend that roots go all the way to the bottom of the pot when you pot the orchid up. I don't mind if there are some dead roots at the bottom, but I'm just contemplating whether I do want to leave all these long, straggly ones there. 
I still serve a purpose. It's not really a biggie because all of my media is inorganic. So it's not like the pot is going to go downhill and decline and the climate gets acidic. That's just not going to happen in Orchid Top with lava rock. Wow. Okay. Whew. Um, that was... <laughs> yeah. One down, two to go. But I want to pot this one up ASAP. Because with the submerged method, the roots are going to be super, super wet. And I want them to dry out as fast as possible. Because now they're not getting their wet, dry cycle in the normal sense of the word. Seeing as the roots will be covered up. I am getting a little bit of branching down here. An attempt of. So I, I want to actually try to promote that. So let's pot this one up. And we'll move on to the next one. Okay, deep breath. <laughs> I've come this far. I know I have two more to go. Woo. All right, well, thank you if you're still here with me. That is Seturkas Pretermisa. She is not, not solid in the pot, but I will not be moving her anyway from the location where she's at and gonna be living for the next six weeks. I have roots that I can monitor. The one that was quetched up in the back here because of the mount. We'll see if it wants to go skyward or if it decides to seek out the humidity. And I have two more root tips here that I can monitor as well. Same as with the pomilla. I created a little pyramid space around root tips that were a little bit vulnerable before I placed Lekka over them. And I hope that helps. Right, now, moving on to the next one. Come here, you little mermaid. <laughs> All right, mm, roots everywhere. You see, I was tempted just to take this one, put it in the orchid top, put lava rock around it and leave it. And I may just still do that because the roots of this one are so much more fleshier. Even though I'm getting new roots. So it is tempting to see if I can get her off the mount. Very tempted. So let's give it a goo and see how far the nerves will hold up and how easy the roots come off because they could come off pretty easily and then we're good to go. Normally this kind of operation would be great with a story, but I really, really have to concentrate. I can't, like just now, leave long gaps in between with what I want to say. At this stage, comment below if you think I'm going to pull through and take it off the mount, or if at some point I'm just going to say, you know what, this is too hairy for me, I'm going to leave it. And then afterwards you can see whether you were right or wrong. Let's see if this little bit of interaction between us will work because that helps me to stay motivated. And either way, it'll be fun to see how things go, hey? So am I going to go through with it or am I going to stop and say, look, this is too precarious? Because right now I'm telling you it is not hot, but I have a towel next to me to wipe the sweat off my brow. <laughs>
Okay, whoa, well we've come this far. I could recognize three times that I cracked the root. I'll just get rid of the little stuff that is easily accessible. It's really not necessary, so let's get you situated into your new home. See, just like other orchid roots, there are some that still want to grow even though they're damaged at the top. It's just hanging on by a thread. We'll leave it and let it do its thing once it's in the pot. Saving Grace, got two roots coming. And hopefully she just felt a little tickle on her feet and found that very pleasant and will start to shoot out more roots instead of going, ah, that was horrible, don't do that again. Small orchid top. Oh, the little capense. This is gonna look corny, but I think I can make it work with some roots in the pot. And some roots will be aerial, which is fine. She knows it that way. There we go. If you stopped and commented, did you guess correctly? Or did you think I would change my mind after I started cracking the roots? <laughs> Edit your comment, add to it. Don't delete your previous comment, let me know. But look, I think she'll be okay. Yes, I'm a bit out of breath, to be honest. <laughs> I think she'll be okay. Yes, she's pretty wet, but that's why I'm gonna just keep trucking on and continue, she'll dry out by tonight. One more to go, if you're still here. Thank you, thank you. One more, one more to go. Deep breath. I think I saved the easiest one for last. <laughs> At least I hope so. <laughs> this one looks pretty easy. I do have to be very mindful of root tip here, teeny tiny root tip there, and the new root coming over there, so I do I have to be careful. I can't just say, well, we've come this far. This one's a doddle. Uh, no, none of these are a doddle. There's always something lurking in the background that can complicate things like a wire. So if you were wondering before, if you were watching before, <laughs> thank you for watching before, why I am taking off the wire instead of just pulling it through. Well, I'm very concerned about these curly bits right here at the end. I always think that they are the ones that could actually do a lot more damage as you pull. So I try to get it as straight and clean as possible to pull the wire through instead of just, you know, trying to go with some kinks and curly bits, possibly doing more damage. So that's the plan anyway. And then comes the knife and then you wonder, well, you're gonna do some damage now. And you're like, uh, yes, but <laughs> this is not how I wanna grow my rangeris. You see, the other one, the Mr. Sidium, was so curled around the mount. I was like, no, 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 this is not going to be an easy task. And then why should you even do it? The cork can deteriorate in the lava rock and just put it into the orchid top with the lava rock. But, oh, you know, you got to give it a go. Got to give it a go. And that's what I'm banking on now as well, that I have the softness of the cork underneath to help me. And you see this one, I can actually hold on to the cork much better. The first one, I actually got a cramp in my thumb by the way I had to hold it because I didn't want to put pressure on the roots where I was holding the bark. So it was all of it, oof. But now, slowly, Nina, just stay, stay slow. Pretend it's your first one, tell your brain this is the first one and we need to be vigilant. We've lodged her off there. We've got her off. Have we? 
almost down here. It's about tricking the brain to think something else is happening as opposed to we're almost home and dry. <laughs> yeah, no, we're just starting. Okay, brain, we're just starting. Stay. Stay the course, stay the focus. So here, I'm not squashing the roots underneath. You can see my knife is at an angle going into the cork, but the roots here by my thumb are not being pressured on at all. There's a gap between my finger and the roots. Because that's one thing is as well, you don't want to be sticking around protecting the roots and then you actually the pressure of your hand is doing the damage to the velamen. So these are loose, which is awesome. Can I get a better angle? Sorry for that glare if that affected you there. See how soft that fork is? So I'm making that work for me by pushing against it, which gives a little bit of leverage under the root. Gosh, if this was a clay mount, I'd be in trouble. So I'm really pleased about getting a cork mount. Meanwhile, if it was on a clay mount, I would probably just stick it into orchid top with the clay mount and that'd be that. Have we got you all or are we still holding on somewhere? with your little fibers. There we go. Ta-da! Three out of three. Woohoo! Three out of three. <sighs> Rangaris muscicola. Let's go. So you know what? This is gorgeous. Right? This is what we saw. <laughs> this is what we get. That's awesome. Two new roots coming out. This makes me happy. This makes me happy. Arise, Sir Muscicola. <laughs> Look, so I've got two large lava rock right here just to support her a little bit more until she anchors herself in. She is solid, but just, you know, for precaution's sake. And I've left the two roots in the back here to go down into the media as and when they wish they're ready and however fast they decide to grow. So there we go, Masicola all done. Long video if you've made it throughout and watched me fiddle away, thank you so much. Little recap, Van der Pumilla, large lava rock, medium sized orchid top. You can see the roots are already drying out while we were fiddling around with the other ones. That is what they've been used to, wet and dry, and summer inside, that will be constantly in a moist, humid environment. Now, if I don't like how the root tips are drying out, I will be misting very, very carefully. We are coming into the colder months of the year, but I think I have another six weeks where I can definitely get her to get accustomed to this little orchid top. You see there's a lot of air there. I don't think I'm going to suffocate her the way I did her predecessor. And here's then the Setorkis, same thing. Same thing. Nothing's changed except she's off the mount and in lava rock. The way I've been handling her since the 9th of July is exactly the same thing, keeping her as wet as possible, only letting her dry out overnight. And now we wait. I don't see why this should be a problem. Why are they so low? Well, with orchid top, the roots should touch the bottom of the pot and then let the orchid grow and do its thing. And that is why they are relatively low because I didn't want to be squishing the roots too much and forcing them into a position that was comfortable with me. I want these orchids to survive. In my opinion, they're irreplaceable. Mr. Sidium Capense here, I'm sure it's going to be super happy in its little setup. We will be monitoring the new roots as she develops. And then here, the Mossicola. Same thing. This is gonna be okay. I am absolutely certain. Six weeks, we've got six weeks. They're living underneath my filming station now. They're out of their green pots. Here is a before shot because, you know, just for memories and keepsakes. <laughs> and this is after. Thank you very, very much for all of you that made this happen. Thank you so much, and I hope that you agree with me 
This looks much, much better than the Greek yogurt tubs, which served their purpose. They did. Can't knock them. But yeah, let me know. Don't you think this looks much better? Thank you so much for making this happen. My orchids and I, thank you. <laughs> Have yourselves a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed the video, even though it was long. If you needed to take advantage of the timestamps, that's what they're there for. Either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. I thoroughly enjoyed getting to this point. Not the process, I must admit. The process was nerve wracking. But now that they're like this, oh, thank you everybody so very, very much. Have a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.